Sweetie, what happened to all the snickerdoodles? Uh, well, actually, I ate them. You're kidding. You know the rule. Bakery workers have a right to one free cookie a day. Yeah, but see, those snickerdoodles are, I mean, were so excellent. I just figured I'd have all of my free cookies for the next two weeks. Sorry, bro. That wasn't the deal. And since you were so greedy, the deal is off. No more free cookies for you. Oh, man. I think there's a story you should hear. It's got a central message you'd be wise to think about. What's a central message? A central message is a big idea or a lesson about life that a story teaches. The Goose That Laid the Golden Eggs One morning, a poor farmer bought a goose. The next morning, the goose had laid a golden egg. The lucky farmer could now buy everything he needed. Every morning, the goose laid another golden egg. One day, the farmer thought to himself, Why wait each day for one more egg? I want all of the gold at once. So the farmer killed the goose and cut it open. But when he looked inside, there were no eggs to be found. What have I done? he cried out. I should have been satisfied with one golden egg a day. Now I'll have none. Moral? Those who are greedy may end up with nothing. See why I wanted you to hear this story? It's a fable. A fable is a story that teaches a lesson. This fable clearly states the central message that the author wants readers to understand. Remember, a central message is a big idea or a lesson about life that the story teaches. Can you find the central message in this fable? Click on the part of the fable that most clearly states the central message. Great! This choice is the central message because it's a lesson everyone could learn. Those who are greedy may end up with nothing. So, I guess I was like that farmer. I mean, kind of greedy. Yep, no more golden eggs for the farmer, and no more free cookies for you, my man. Okay, okay, I get the message. But there's something I get. See this word, moral? What's with that? Well, in a fable, the central message always teaches a lesson, and that lesson is called the moral of the story. Got it. So a moral is a lesson that's taught by a story. Right. And if you read more fables and thought about the morals, maybe you'd wise up and stay out of trouble, like I do. Maybe you could even earn back your cookie rights. Great. In fact, I'll skip the stories and go straight for the morals. That way I can get back my cookie rights a lot faster. Whoa, hold on. The story is what makes you remember the moral. And besides... Lots of fables don't state the moral at the end. You have to infer it. Oh. What does infer mean? When you infer, you use clues from a text and what you know to make a strong guess. Let's check out another fable. In this one from Africa, the author doesn't state the moral at the end. But you can infer it by paying attention to the clues in the text. The Lion and the Beetle One day, the lion strolled through the tall grass. He was thinking, what a fine sight I make. All the animals admire my bushy mane, strong muscles, long teeth and sharp claws. How pleasant it is to be the very best in every way. He stopped at the water hole to gaze at his handsome face. Still, he was not completely satisfied. How grand it would be if every animal bowed as I passed, the lion thought. He decided to call a meeting and declare a new law. To prepare for the meeting, the lion made himself look even finer than usual. He found a large rock and carved out a fancy crown. 
he gathered giant diamonds and rubies to add to the crown. When he finally placed it on his head, the crown was so heavy that he staggered under its weight, but he practiced wearing it until he could walk like a king. On the day of the meeting, the animals gathered near the water hole. Everyone was there, from the elephant and the giraffe down to the smallest beetle. The lion stood before them, his crown sparkling. Everyone must bow to King Lion, he roared, and anyone who fails to obey. But the lion didn't bother to finish this sentence. He merely smacked his lips as the other animals trembled. Form a lion, commanded the lion, and as he paraded past them, his head high, each animal bowed low. But when the lion came to the smallest beetle, he stopped. I can barely see you, growled the lion in disgust. The beetle was no bigger than the period at the end of this sentence. How can I be sure you are bowing? I am bowing, cried the beetle, in a tiny shaky voice. I vow that I am telling the truth. Why should I, the king, accept a vow from you, a lowly beetle? I will not believe what I can't see for myself. The lion squinted to get a better look at the beetle, but he could not tell if the beetle was bowing. With an angry snort, he crouched down to look more closely, but still he couldn't tell if the beetle was bowing. Now the lion was hardly able to contain his rage. He lowered his head for the best possible view, but the moment he tipped his head, his heavy crown slid down his snout. Losing his balance, the lion fell flat on his face in a patch of mud, and the beetle scurried away to safety. The sight was too much for the other animals. They burst into fits of laughter and could not stop. Blinking mud from his eyes, the lion saw that his pride had made a clown of him, so he dragged himself to his feet and crept away. Quite wisely, he left his crown behind. So, sweet tea, that was another story whose central message is a lesson or moral. Did you get the message? Ah, uh, let me think about it. Uh, no. Well, that's probably because the author didn't state the central message at the end. Remember, the story about the goose stated the central message. But the story about the lion and beetle doesn't state the central message. Sometimes you have to message which means figure it out from the clues and what you know. Yeah, but what clues? Well, the clues have to come from the story, right? So the clues we look at are key details, the most important details in a story. Let's leave this story and find key details in the story we just read, The Lion and the Beetle. Okay. So if I want to find the central message, I need key details. But how do you know which details in The Lion and the Beetle are key details? Good question, bro. Because stories have tons of details, especially about the characters, a character is a person or animal in the story. So, like, here's a detail about the characters. The animals gathered near the waterhole. Is that a key detail? Not quite. That's a detail about all of the animals, but not every character in a story is important. A key detail would be more likely to tell something about the most important character in the story. And I think I know who the most important character in this story is. <laughs> Click on the most important character in the story. You got it. The lion is most important because the story is mainly about what happens to him. Now that you know who the most important character is, it gets easier to figure out the central message that the author wants you to understand. It does? Sure. Remember, we're going to use clues to infer or figure out the central message, and our clues are going to be key details for the story, right? So to find the key details, we look for the details that tell important things about the most important character. Like, what kinds of things? Well, key
key details answer these questions. What is the most important character like? What does this character want? What happens to this character in the end? Why does this happen to the character? What does this character learn from what happens? And since we know that in this story, the most important character is the lion, we know that the key details are the ones that answer these questions about the lion. Help us out. Click on each question to make it ask about the lion. What is the lion like? What does the lion want? What happens to the lion in the end? Why does this happen to the lion? What does the lion learn from what happens? Let's take some notes. We'll find the key details by asking these questions about the story, and the answers will be our clues to the central message, the lesson that the story teaches. You know, I think I'm starting to feel wiser already, and a little hungry too. When do I get back my cookie rights? Not so fast. We've got some work to do. Let's start with the first question: What is the lion like? Oh man, that's a snap. Says right here what he's like: got a bushy mane, strong muscles, long teeth, and sharp claws. Good, bro. That's what the lion looks like. But what's more important to a story is what a character is like inside. Here's a key detail that shows what the lion is like inside. He was thinking, "What a fine sight I make." <laughs> I know, right? And here's another key detail. He's thinking how pleasant it is to be the very best in every way. Read the two key details that are highlighted in the story. What do they tell you about what the lion is like inside? Click on the question mark. Choose the answer that best describes what the lion is like. One day, the lion strolled through the tall grass. He was thinking, "What a fine sight I make! All the animals admire my bushy mane, strong muscles, long teeth, and sharp claws. How pleasant it is to be the very best in every way!" Good one. The key details show that the lion considers himself better than everyone. He's one very proud lion. We could use some help finding the key detail that answers our next question: What does the lion want? Find the key detail that tells what the lion most wants. Drag it to the notebook. He stopped at the water hole to gaze at his handsome face. Still, he was not completely satisfied. How grand it would be if every animal bowed as I passed! The lion thought. He decided to call a meeting and declare a new law. It's a hit. This detail tells the main thing the lion wants. He wants everyone to bow down to him. Let's write it this way in the notebook. Ready to help us out again? Now we're looking for a key detail that answers our next question: What happens to the lion in the end? Find the key detail that tells the most important thing that happens to the lion. Drag it to the notebook. Score. When the lion falls in the mud, he learns a lesson. So this is the most important thing that happens to the lion. Man, this story cracks me up. Oh, lion really blew it. Big old face full of mud. Yeah, pretty funny. But the author isn't just trying to make you laugh. We're looking for the central message. Remember? Oh yeah. Right. So, what happens to the lion in the end is that he falls in the mud. But now we have to think about the next question: 
Why does this happen to the lion? I don't get what difference it makes why it happens. It just happens. The end. Wrong. When things go bad, like when you lost your cookie rice, for example, ugh. you have to understand why things went bad or you won't learn your lesson. Same thing goes for a story. Okay, okay. So why does the lion fall in the mud? Of course, one reason the lion fell was that his crown was too heavy. But there's another reason that's even more important to the story. Reread this part of the story and see if you can find the reason. Click on the most important reason why the lion ended up in the mud. Form a line, commanded the lion. And as he paraded past them, his head high, each animal bowed low. But when the lion came to the smallest beetle, he stopped. I can barely see you, growled the lion in disgust. The beetle was no bigger than the period at the end of this sentence. How can I be sure you are bowing? I am bowing, cried the beetle, in a tiny shaky voice. I vow that I am telling the truth. Why should I, the king, accept a vow from you, a lowly beetle? I will not believe what I can't see for myself. The lion squinted to get a better look at the beetle, but he could not tell if the beetle was bowing. With an angry snort, he crouched down to look more closely, but still, he couldn't tell if the beetle was bowing. He could not trust the beetle, who often told lies. He was too proud to believe the vow of a beetle. The beetle tricked him into losing his balance. The other animals were making fun of him. If he believed the beetle, he wouldn't have bent over and fallen. So, we know the most important reason why the lion falls in the mud. Yeah, because he's too proud to believe the vow of a beetle. Now, we're ready to ask our last question. Lion, learn from what happens. Reread the ending of the story before you answer. Click on the question mark. Choose the statement that best tells what the lion learns. The sight was too much for the other animals. They burst into fits of laughter and could not stop. Blinking mud from his eyes, the lion saw that his pride had made a clown of him. So he dragged himself to his feet and crept away. Quite wisely, he left his crown behind. Being weak caused him to let the beetle escape. Being careless caused him to hurt himself. Being too proud caused him to fall and look silly. Being too curious caused him to lose his crown. Nice. At the end of the story, you can be pretty sure the lion has learned never to act quite so proud again. Now that we've asked all our questions, let's go over the clues to the central message. Well, what the lion is like is that he's very proud. And what does he want? He wants everyone to bow down to him. Yeah. But then what happens to him in the end is that he falls flat on his face in a patch of mud. And why this happens to him is because he was too proud to believe the vow of a beetle. So what he learns from what happened is that being too proud caused him to fall and look silly. Now, bro, can you put together all those clues and come up with the central message? Easy. The central message is... If you're, like, a king, and you act all proud and stuck up, and then you fall in the mud, everyone's gonna laugh at you. Well, close, but not quite. The central message of a story is a message or lesson for everyone. So the central message of this story is not just about kings who fall in the mud. Okay. 
So the central message of this story isn't just about what happens to the characters in this story. It's a lesson about what could happen to anyone, like you or me. Can you help me find the central message? Click on the choice that best states the central message in this story. If rulers act too proud, they may end up losing their power. If a lion acts too proud, it may end up as lowly as a bug. If you act too proud, you may end up looking foolish. If a handsome fellow acts too proud, he may end up covered with mud. Good pick. The story's central message is that if you act too proud, you may end up looking foolish. That's the lesson the author wants everyone to learn. Jake, here you are, man. I was looking for you everywhere. Hey. Who snatched the snickerdoodles? I swear it wasn't me this time. Oh, yeah. Actually, it was me. I have a weakness for snickerdoodles. What? No fair. You took away my cookie rights. And now look at you. Swiping snickerdoodles is swiping, no matter who snatched the batch. Okay, okay. Guilty as charged. Guess I shouldn't have been so high and mighty. Guess not. I'm going to go write a fable about this. And you know what its central message is going to be?